Hi guys, in this video we are painting the Americana Barn with the sunflowers. Um, make sure you have your plate with your paints all set up on there. You're going to need an assortment of brush sizes, um, probably a little guy, medium guy, small guy. And I won't be needing this great big one, but y'all have the bigger canvas, so you'll definitely want a larger brush. Um, you're going to need a little jar of water or something to put water in. And then, of course, some paper towels. Little rolls sitting here. Make sure you have those on hand to dry your brushes and to clean up any spills you might, you know, that might happen accidentally. So I'm going to get us started. And I have already painted this once. Funny story. I uh, was recording and apparently phone calls interrupt my video, even though they don't ring through because I have on do not disturb mode, they will cut my video out and I didn't know it. So I painted the whole thing again without realizing that I had no video. So that's a little frustrating, but now I know you know, I'm a little, I have a better idea of how to do this one. Not that it was, I didn't, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, let me just grab that one. So here's the one I painted before. Um, I think my daisy placement is a little bit different. Um, my sketch I changed up just a little bit. But there you have it. This is what we're doing. You'll have a nice, great big one. And not daisy, sunflowers. Dang it. So today, I know I'm just kind of rambling on. Today I have my phone plugged in. It's already fully charged but I'm plugged in just in case, and I have it in airplane mode, so hopefully nothing can come through and disturb me. Because if I have to paint this for a third time, I'm probably gonna completely lose it. Let's get started. This is gonna go much better for me, I, I can feel it. So, we are going to do the sky area, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint all the way down in here. It will mostly be covered, but just in case we have any gaps in our greenery or our flowers, we'll have some kind of paint on there. Um, the sky is very, very light blue. So you're going to take just the tiniest bit of blue on your brush, and you're going to stir it in with a whole bunch of white. It's very, very pale, and you're going to need, you know, three to four times the amount mixed up. Make sure you do mix up enough to fill in that whole area. You just don't want to run out of the color and have to try to mix it again and match it because it won't match exactly. And you'll see you know, the difference. So just make sure you get enough mixed up to fill in your whole sky. And you're just going to come in and brush it on. Nice, smooth, even strokes. So you see mine does kind of have a little bit of darker patches. That's just because I have a little blue up in my bristles. And I'm fine with that. I think it helps helps make it look more like a sky, you know, realistically with some clouds in the background. Some of those spots do get a little bright. I just go over them a few times and they blend in. And this color does dry a little bit darker all acrylic paint will dry darker than, you know, when you mix it up, it might seem, oh wow, that's perfect. And then you get on there and it's dry and you're like, hmm, gosh, that, that could be a little lighter. So that's why I'm not, it just dries darker. I'm not sure the science behind it. And I'm gonna get all the way down in here just to make sure I have some paint coverage in case I have like little peekaboo areas with my greenery and flowers. I am going around like the sunflower heads, the centers of those flowers, just so I don't lose their placement. And that's the reason I put them on, just for placement reference for you guys. 
um, you can feel free to take your pencil, go in, and add in more. That's perfectly fine, up to you. But I feel, what do I have, seven? I think that works pretty good. Don't forget this little chunk of sky over here. And there we go. I'm just going to take a little white in just to kind of thin out some of the monotony of all the blue. Just a little white on my, oh, there was a big old blob of blue there. And I'm just doing nice long strokes. So let's start on our barn. I'm going to do the red part of the barn and I need to mix up a color. I don't want it red, red. I want it kind of an orangey red. So with the burnt orange on your plate and the red, you're gonna mix about equal parts of both, maybe a little bit more red. I'm just getting my brush cleaned out here and I'll show ya. You'll likely wanna use a bigger brush than me. Um, my space is quite small, but a big brush for a larger canvas will work perfect. So to mix up my color, I'm just gonna take a nice big old scoop of this burnt orange color and stir in about the same amount of red, maybe a little bit more. And again, make sure you are mixing up enough of the color to be able to fill in that whole space. You don't wanna run out. So that's about right. And I'm just gonna do nice long strokes and just get this all filled in. I'm trying to stay up and down. It's a little harder on this edge. So I get the edge in and then I can just switch my brush strokes to up and down. I want it to kind of mimic boards. So if my brush stroke is going in that direction and it kind of helps give that illusion. Canvas is scooping and jumping all over the place on me. That's kind of annoying. I'm just going to go around my flower heads. Um, I do know now, but when I painted that before, I painted all this in here red. That's not really necessary. I'm gonna go and get down over even on the side and then I'll figure it out. It was just hard to cover that red with the other colors. So let's try to avoid that. Make it a little easier on us. You do wanna go all the way down this edge for the most part. Oh, you know what? 
I remember why I did that before. Because when we do paint over it, there's going to be areas that are overlapping that we might not paint. So instead of having like uneven color, because when we try to cover it, when we do the greenery and the um, flowers, the color behind it shows through. So if we don't do this all, we've got spots that will show through more so than others, if that makes any sense. So go ahead, I retract my previous statement. We are going to fill in all this area where we're gonna be putting in the sunflowers. And these sunflower heads, you don't have to be absolutely perfect with going around because the centers are a nice dark, dark brown and they cover this very easy and we can reshape them when we get those put in. Okay, got my barn on. Just kind of smoothing out some funky brush marks. This does show right up under here, I do believe. So we'll get that nice and clean. Okay. So next, I'm going to just clean out my brush. And I'm going to weather that barn a little bit by just very lightly brushing some white on. It's going to be very little on your brush. Very light-handed. So I've got my brush. Again, you can you can absolutely use your bigger brush. I'm getting a little bit on my bristles and then just kind of patting it out on the side. I want very little paint on there. And then coming from the flag, I'm gonna kind of flick up and it's very light handedly. I'm gonna start adding some streaks in. And you can use the side of your brush too and kind of put in some like narrow, narrow ones. So the skinny edge of your brush. Some of the, that are the wide side. Just kind of mix it up. You do want nice long, cause they are boards. You want some long strokes and do try to keep them straight. I think that one just went crooked, but. You wanna keep them as straight as possible because we're mimicking barn board. You're gonna come all the way down, get some on the edges. You can get some down in here. I don't think a lot of this will show, but the bits that do, you're gonna want just as weathered as the rest. So about like that, and you can put some heavier areas in too if you wish, like maybe here, we can just kind of make it a little bit whiter. And it's like no paint on my brush at all. I mean, obviously there's a little, but it's very, very trace amounts. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on this overhang and I'm going to do a nice dark brown to start, and then I'm gonna blend in a light brown. So the dark brown is going to be put in all the shadowy areas. Let's get that mixed up. To make the dark brown, it is going to be black and orange. So about the same amount of both, maybe a little bit more black than orange. I just want it to be this nice, dark brown. So something about like that. And again, I don't want a ton on my brush. 
So this little overhang thing, I'm gonna brush in a little bit of the dark brown. In this area here, in this kind of point, I guess it's a point. I'm gonna get that brushed in dark brown. And here, I'm going to get right up in the edge. As you can see, I'm not being absolutely perfect at this point. Just a little bit dark too. Because I'm going to be blending this out with a lighter brown. So I'm just going to take a scoop of white. Mix it in with a little bit of my dark brown. And I have this lighter shade. And this I'm just gonna fill in the rest and overlap onto the dark brown. And don't worry if it's not really blending that great. We'll be adding a little bit more of the dark brown in to help transition the two colors together. So as you can see, it's pretty much covered up all my dark there. I'll just take a little bit more dark on my brush and just put it right on top. So we will be edging this very edge later on the inside and on the outside. So your edges don't need to be perfectly clean. No worries there. We will tidy them up later. So the very outside edge of this gets a white trim and an outline, and then the inside edge just gets a nice dark outline. So oh, something about like that. Um, maybe just a little bit lighter in a few areas. I'm just gonna add a little bit more white into my light brown. I just kind of brush that on in the middle-ish spaces. Just a little. Very little on my brush, very light. So now I'm going to do my dark brown um, line on the inside. So I'm going to use my dark brown and a small skinny brush. And it does work a little easier for me if I thin out my paint. So I just dip my brush in my water jar and then stir, <clears throat> excuse me, stir the little bit of water in. It just helps the paint flow better. It's just a smoother, it just works better. So on my inside here. Just very thin. I'm just gonna clean up that edge. Okay, I'm gonna clean up this bottom little edge here. I got a little messy there. I'll just tidy that up a little. All right, now I'm going to move on and do, okay, let's do the white thing. So we'll do, I'm just taking some white and I'm going to just put 
a, a line of white right across the top here. I mean, it can overlap onto the brown some and then a little into the sky some. So kind of like half and half your line should be a little bit on both the sky and the barn. I should put this so I can get at it better. And I'm using this kind of um, small square brush. You could probably use your medium brush. Then once we finish this white line, we're going to put in the little hay, whatever that is. The, what is that? The hay they lost? We'll put in a little, a little door to that, if you will. This white also comes down the very edge of the barn. A little trim work there. And we're just gonna put in like a rectangular shape. Find center. It's hard when I'm to the side, but my center is here. And I'll just do a little line across the top. And I'm gonna come down and then across. And that might need a second coat just to get the red all covered. And now a little bit more of our line work. We're gonna outline both sides of the, the white that we put on. And we're going to outline, well, I guess that's the white that we put on. So both sides of this, and then both sides of this, and both sides of that. I painted this yesterday. I was having a heck of a time. My brush kept splitting. I'm gonna find a better brush. Hopefully that one works. Get these on here so I don't need to grab them. So again, it's this dark brown color and if you run out, it's black mixed with orange. Oh, about the same amount of both. I'm gonna thin it just a little by dipping my brush in water and stirring the water in. Let me just check the video, make sure we're still rolling. Okay, look as good. The only thing is, you weren't quite center. There, sorry. So, with my long skinny liner brush, I'm just gonna go in and do all my outlining. So I'm gonna do both sides of this white. I just ran my hand across wet paint. That's why I did a time. Let me just blow it dry real quick. I said I did the bottom of the white and I'm gonna do the top. And this is kind of fiddly. Not perfect, but that's okay. Adds to the rustic charm.
this a little bit. Let's see. Get this at an angle where it's this isn't in my way. And then I'm gonna outline my little loft opening thing. So I'll just do the insides and the outsides of that white. So next, let's move on and do the flag. Go ahead and paint this hole where the stripes will be white. And then all we'll have to do is do red stripes. We'll get that done. We can, while the white dries, we'll do the blue and then we can go in and do our stripes. So nice clean brush, nice thin layer of white paint in the stripe area. Get that all filled in. Just try to keep your edge line, your edge work smooth and even. We will touch that up a little bit with a little dark brown for a little shadow on the edges. And that helps clean up the, the edge a little bit. So just make sure you don't have any globbies. Nice and smooth and even layer of paint. And go around my little sunflower heads. And you could probably actually paint over them, but I don't want you to lose your, your line. That seems pretty good. So while that dries, I'm gonna do my blue patch here where the stars go. I'm gonna darken it a little. I'm not gonna worry about cleaning out my brush because I am gonna be adding a little bit of white anyway. So a little dab of red in with some blue here. Maybe a little bit more red. Just don't want it to turn purple. So just be easy on the, on the red. Just do a little bit at a time into your blue until it just darkens a smidge. About like that. And I'll just, I'm gonna start by just kind of going around my edge. Because I want it to kind of fade a little in the center. So I'm just getting the blue around the edge. And while that's still nice and wet, I'm just gonna dip it in a little bit of white. Just a little. And I'm just going to start at the center with the white and then just kind of smush it all around till it kind of blends out to the edges. And it's, it's just the tiniest bit of uh, white. And we will be putting stars on and you don't want this to get so light that there's no contrast between you know, the stars and your blue. I could even stand to do a little bit more white in mine, just a little, and just start in the middle. And just kind of blend it outward. Okay, so I'm gonna just make sure that my white patch here where the stripes are gonna be is dry before I go in with red paint and do the stripes because I don't want pink stripes. So I'm just gonna blast it quick with my blow dryer. I'm 
going to use the same size. And my lines are going to be pretty much the width of my brush. I'm going to get a red one, a white one, a red one, a white one, a red one. Is that what I did? I feel like I only had three red ones. So yeah, this one red, skip a space, red, skip a space, red. So I have three red ones. The top one is red. I'll do right across here where it's lined up with the blue. I'll go across here and then in between those two will be red. And then I can fit in three more red at the bottom. I have a white, a red, a white, a red. It's easier to just show you. So to darken the red just a little, you take a little bit of your blue this time and stir it into quite a bit of your red. It does not take a lot of blue at all to darken the red and you just want it darkened just a touch. I'm just gonna start at the top. Try to steady my canvas so it doesn't move around on me. Go a little bit thicker with my line. And if, even if you wanted to, to make yours absolutely perfect, so I'm not really worried about mine being a little off, I'm okay with that. As a painting, it won't be perfect. But you can take a little ruler and just measure it out and do your lines that way. And then you'll have nice, perfect lines. So it just depends on how big of a perfectionist you are. But it's relatable. I get it. Um, I'm going to do this bottom one first. Try to stay nice and level. And that way I can easily find center in a lot of space and Ideally, have my stripes all be the same width. This needs to be a little bit fatter like this one, and I'll take it fatter above because I don't want the stripe to go below the blue. And you could do thinner stripes. You would just have a lot more stripes. Try to keep it minimal just so just so it doesn't take forever. I mean lots of strips obviously is gonna take more time. I mean it would look really nice if you, you know, did it exactly how the flag is. I don't know how you'd manage all those stars, but you could do it. So now I'm just gonna find my center. I feel like this is going to be a little bit wider. So I lied. I'm not finding center yet. So my center is about here. And then to stay straight, I just look at those white spaces and I go a little bit at a time. And I just try to keep the white space straight. I don't really look at my red. I'm looking at the space. And the bottom ones, I'm leaving a space. So there's my red one here, white. Do I only get to fit two in there? Gosh, I feel like, yeah, there's only two fit in there. So I've got this one and then my bottom one. I can kind of get my spacing figured out now. And I'm around the cross. 
And again, I look at the white space to try to keep my brush straight. I just go a little slow. I'm just looking at that top white stripe above where I'm working. And if you want to go in and do a second coat on these, feel free. For the sake of just keeping the video, you know, at a minimum length, I will just do the one. But it, does, it would look nicer with a second coat. Just make sure your first coat is dry first. Otherwise, sometimes the paint will be kind of tacky and it will lift the first coat up and you'll have like this weird hole where the canvas is kind of poking through and, and then it becomes really hard to get covered. The last one. I think I need to make that red one just a little bit wider going at the bottom. Be kind of skinny. I'm just making my white stripe kind of fat. I just went right through my sunflower head there. I know it's there. I can see the bottom of it. If you want to go in and touch up your white, go ahead. The red is hard to cover, so if you've got a big old slop somewhere, you have to layer on several times. Let the white dry in between, and eventually you'll get it covered, or at least mostly. And it will look at least better than it did before. I'm just touching up. I got, oh, look, I got my hand right there. Wonderful. I'm just touching up, like, my corners. I got, I could see, like, little bits of white showing. Let's see here, what's next? Let's go ahead and put our stars on. And that is just um, small brush white paint. I use my little square brush. I just prefer a square brush personally. A lot of people like, like the pointy ones. And just a little bit of white on my little brush. And I'm gonna do Four rows, the top row I'll get four squeezed in, then I'll stagger and do three, four, and then three. I'm going to blow this dry because I'm going to rest my hand in that. And it's red and it's wet. little stars. I do them like I grade a paper. So I do the outline of the star and then just go in and fill it. Tiny, tiny bit of paint on your brush when you do this. I'm just going to go in and get them all made maybe. And they're so little, they're quick to fill. It's like a little dab in the middle. Yours are a little bigger. I forget your canvas is bigger. It's a lot easier to work on a bigger canvas, to be honest with you. It may take more time to fill in the areas, but your areas are larger and it takes less detail work. And it's a little bit more forgiving. So if you kind of make a little mess up, it doesn't really stand out as much.
So there I have my stars are. And now I'm going to just do my little bit of outlining around the edge of the flag. Taking my dark brown, and again, that's just black and orange, about the same amount of both. Get a little water on your brush and stir it in, just to help it flow. And I'm just gonna go around the top. And then this is just like real thin and sketchy, like it's not a solid, super solid line. So there's that. So we have everything done except for the sunflower part. So if you need a little break, take a little break. But no, that was kind of intense. We got quite a bit left to do. I'm gonna just start in by making my green color for all my leaves. I'm gonna use my small brush that's like squarish. I'm getting that cleaned out. And we're gonna make like this limey green color, just a little bit on the darker end. So this is gonna be the base coat. And then we'll follow up by layering on lighter, brighter shades of green. Um, a little bit of blue and with a lot of yellow. Something like that. And then we're gonna add quite a bit of white to that. And you see, my hand is always in the way I feel. Nice big old scoop of white, just throw that right in. And this white added in is gonna help block out the color beneath, which is important. It will probably take, as I recall, it took two coats of, to get, you know, pretty good coverage. You could even do three coats if you want. But by the time we layer on top, quite a few coats happen. So, about like that. And this does dry a little darker. This isn't exactly like my other one. That's okay. It will all be fine. I'm just gonna get all this goop off the top of my brush. Now I'm gonna start by just putting in kind of some leafy like shapes on my edge. So how about one way up there? It might've been a little high. I can do a leaf shape here that kind of overlaps. And maybe one, this one's gonna connect them. And don't worry about your sunflower at this moment. They will be overlapping onto top of this later. And so anything kind of below where our top leaves are, we're gonna just fill in green. What we only need to worry about the shape of the leaves on the top kind of row. So maybe we'll stick one that comes here and here. We'll have one that comes here. And you could do, I mean, mine are pretty big. You could do smaller, whatever you decide. And this is gonna definitely have a lot of sunflower in this area. So how about one here? Leafy there. Nice big ones coming off of this one. I'm really getting on my flag there, aren't I? That's okay. Um, 
few more up in here. I'll come So these down here, honestly, I don't really need to be shaping those out. At this point, I can just come in with my bigger brush. I'll show you. And I'm just gonna fill in everything with shade of gray. I just really needed to piece out those ones on the top edge. When we start layering our other greens on, that is when, and I'm gonna darken it a little. I feel like that's a little late. I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue and a little bit more yellow. Well, that really did not do a whole lot. There, that's a little darker. I'm just gonna go right back over these. Oh yes, that's better. Sorry. I guess I just thought it was gonna dry a little darker than it did. All as well, we needed to do another coat on these anyway. And we'll likely need to add a few more in too, we'll see. We'll see how hers looks. Okay, so all this space down in here, just get filled in. Just go right all over everything. And yes, it's gonna be a little streaky and look a little crappy. We will do another coat. Just kinda. So right there, I could probably put another leaf. I'm gonna just flip this. So I'm just filling in everything below my top row of those leaves that I kind of like pieced out. And now it looks really awful right now. Just trust me. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna give this a blast with my blow dryer and just do one more quick coat and then I'll start layering. Just come in, do another coat, same color. Get it spread out nice and even.
Okay, got all of our green to put in. And you see, it is starting to make a little bit more sense now. I mean, I know it's still kind of goofy. But as we layer, you're going to like it a lot better. I promise. So, I'm going to start using a smaller brush. My small square one. And I want to lighten and brighten this color up. And I can start piecing out leaves. You know what? Before I do that, let's do... It makes more sense to do the flowers. I can't even remember what I did. Did I do the flowers first and then the leaves? Yeah, I did. So let's go ahead and do our flowers. I'm going to just blow this dry. And I'll start by just doing the centers. And I'm going to do, just so we have their shape nice and perfect, right back to where they were. i got to fix that one. This one's kind of weird. I just want to get my centers very established, I guess. So, I'm going to use my medium brush. And I'm going to use just this dark brown color we've made already. It's black and orange. Maybe mix up a little bit more. And then just go in and do your sunflower heads. And just flip it over. And you can add in more if you want. You can have some little itty bitty ones. But just remember you are gonna want some room for petals and all of those leaves. This one's kind of like an ovally. Mm, that's so annoying. It's an ovally shape just because I'm having it kind of face sideways. But you can do it nice and round if you want. And this one just runs off the bottom. There. Now it looks even more ridiculous. Now we're going to start with all of the petals. And I'm going to mix up a very, very pale yellow. It's basically like the primer layer. We just need to block out all that green. So we'll probably do two coats of this. Just because we want that green covered really well. Uh, it's just a little bit of yellow stirred in with quite a bit of white. And make sure you mix up a bunch of this. And... Honestly, you could just use white. I just like to put the yellow in. Because it will be covered later with brighter yellow. This is just kind of the block out primer layer. With this color, you're just going to go in and put petals on all of your flower heads. And this does take a little bit of time. So just take your time, work through them all. Um, some can have great big petals. You can do little ones, just whatever you're feeling. And as you can see, the paint does show through from behind. That's why we're going to do a second coat. Try not to have thick globs. It's very little paint on your brush at a time. Just get that all smoothed out. And don't worry about your centers, getting sloppy on your centers. We're going to go right over those later fix those up so no no stress there and 
let's get this brush right off the edge. This one kind of goes behind that one. So when I fill it in, I'll just do another quick coat on top just to make sure that that one looks like it's in front of. Sorry, I'm just gonna just check your No, you are not in view at all. How's that? Better.
So this one again is gonna be kind of under this one here. I'll just go back on top of those. So one's this way. And this last one here, I can do either behind or on top. I'm going to tuck it behind this one and maybe put it on top of that one. We'll see. Either way, doesn't really matter. Just whatever you're feeling. I'll start where I can get a good pedal in. And this, let's see, how would be like this, like that, like that, and like that. I'll let this fill in this little space in between. Then I'm going to go back over the ones that I want in front of. So let's put you in front. This one I want in front. And this one is in front. Now I'm just going to go back to my beginning and give them one more quick coat and we can start layering on to put the bright spots. So just go right back over all of your petals, same color. We're just gonna get another little base of this very block out light shade to help cover the darker colors beneath. And yeah, it's not perfect. If you wanna go ahead and do a third coat, feel free. I'm just gonna do the two and color good. It's gonna flip. So this thing gets in my way. I got a big old glob of paint. Again, just make sure you get your your petals that you want in front put in front. I make sure that I paint. So if I were to paint, you know, this one in here that's gonna be behind. I fill that one in and then you can come and just redo the ones on top. It just helps it stand out a little better. But definitely if you want a little better coverage, go back in for a third round and that should look a little bit better for you.
how this one overlaps and that one overlaps, I'll just redo those real quick. Just so they're definitely on top of. Makes it a little easier to see. Okay, so we got those all in. Starting to look real pretty. Now we're going to paint them just straight bright yellow. Use the same brush. I will, okay, I lied. I am gonna add a little bit of white to the bright yellow, just a little. I want it nice and bright still, but that little bit of white will add another little layer of blocking. So just a smidge, just to kind of give it a little extra coverage. I'm just gonna put it over here just so it's easier for me to grab with my brush while I'm working. And we're gonna paint right over top of everything one more time. Flipping just cause it's easier for me. You want to get all your little light yellow slash white covered up nice. This is a bit of a process, but I think the outcome is really nice. I think these turn out really nice. That's so annoying. They put easel, canvas, whatever.
nice bright yellow on. Now I'm going to make a little bit of a lighter yellow. Basically what we just used to do our base. I'm just stirring what was on my brush into it. And I'm just gonna go in and put some highlights. So on each petal, I'm just kind of swooping in, doing a quick Click little swoopies on them just to give them a little more, you know, variation in color because the light is hitting them in different spots, yada, yada. I'm going to flip though, just so I can get at it better. going to go back to my centers. I'm going to keep it flipped. I'm going to do the clean on my edge with my dark brown and then I'm going to swirl a little bit of some lighter like just the orange color in. So I'll show you on this nice big one. I'm just going to clean up my edge and just get that brush through. Smooth it out. And I'm going to take just my orange. And I'm just going to kind of swoop it on one side. And I probably should have done it on the other side. Just as long as I do it all on the same side. I'm just going to swirl it all the way in. That works. So just get your dark brown on. Might as well just get them all done. I could get this easel to quit kicking my canvas out on me. Life would be good. I'm just tidying up my centers. Just with my dark brown. That one I did slop. This one got weird. And I can go in with my orange. I'm gonna just swirl it through the centers of each one. And just kind of spiral it around. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of white into that color. So just a smidge of white into my orange. I got way too much orange. A little bit more white. I just want this to show up just a little bit brighter. Maybe even just take a little yellow in. So a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, and your orange. Just going to kind of make this light orange peachy color. And I'm going to just take a little bit of that. Just to the, let's see, left hand side, beach one, kind of brighten it up a little. It's gonna be easier upside down. Just so each one has like this little pop of this brighter color. Okay, last little part of the flowers before we hit the leaves, you're gonna just take your itty bitty skinny brush a little bit of your orange paint. I'm gonna thin it out. I dipped it in water. I'm stirring the water in. 
Got a bunch of blue that's creeping on me. So I just want to thin out my paint a little bit. And at the base of each center where the petals kind of overlap. I'm gonna just flip my brush. One. So I'm just doing just a tiny little line just to kind of separate out each petal that I do. Put my thumb. I'm flipping this. I'm just putting a little dash of that orange color right to separate out. And it just kind of goes right into the center of the flower. This just kind of puts a little separation between each petal. Putting a little itty bitty shadow in. And it's just the orange color, not mixed with anything except a little bit of water. Now we can move on to the leaves. I'll keep it this way to show you to start, just so it's easier for your brain to see what I'm doing. I know I struggle to watch somebody do something a different direction than me. So, using my small square brush, and I have this green still on my plate. If you do not, it was a little blue mixed with a lot of yellow and some white. And you keep adding blue until you kind of reach the shade. I am going to stir in a lot of white into a little of my area here, lighten it up. I don't need a ton, so I'm just light lightening up just a little bit here. And I want it to be a little brighter, so I'm scooping up quite a bit of yellow to stir in as well. Now with this color, I can start piecing out individual leaves. I'm gonna wipe all that goop off of my brush just so I don't get it all on my hands because I tend to hold my brush real close to the bristles from time to time. And a little bit on our brush, don't need a lot. And each one of our like leaves, especially the ones on top, we're just gonna kind of piece out. So I'm just reshaping this one and at this point it is perfectly okay to leave some of that dark green behind I'm gonna start with my top kind of edgy ones because those I know for sure where they go because I can see their shape rather well I'm just brushing a little bit on especially kind of the little pieces now down in here, we can just kind of make it up. So maybe one that's coming out here. Have one like that. Maybe one here. Fill in that one. I'm going to just give them another quick little coat so I can see them well. And I'm just going to go all through all my green, filling in little leaves. This one coming off the edge here. And then anywhere there's like kind of a space with the dark green, go ahead and put a little leaf in. So here I have a little space. Put a leaf in there. Here, it's kind of a, a weird shape, but I can just kind of make a leaf that looks like maybe it's going behind the rest. But I am leaving areas of that darker green show. That's perfectly fine. So as this color is drying, it does get a little bit darker. 
We are gonna layer one more time on top. I'm just doing a quick second coat with this color just to get it covered nice. I'm gonna layer one more time just to get a nice bright pop on those leaves. And again, I'm gonna lighten my color. So I'm gonna take a big old scoop of my white, stir it in with a little area of my green. And this was the lightest green so far that we've made. I'm making lighter and a bunch more yellow. And this will be my final little coat. I'm just going to put a little pop of brightness on each one of those leaves I just made. And it's okay to leave. So I'm leaving a little bit of the other color that I just did show. Oh, look, I got, I got stuff all over this thing from grabbing it. Thumbprints. So there, now we have all our leaves filled in. <laughs> look at that. And that, I believe, is everything. I'm just gonna look over the one I did already, compare, make sure I didn't skip anything. I'm gonna have a tendency to get ahead of myself and say we're done when we're not. Oh, I think we got it all. Looks good. So feel free to sign your name. I like to do it in the lower right-hand corner. Just take a little bit of paint. I'll use some of this orange that I thinned out earlier. I'm just gonna stick my name right here. And done. I might even fix that. It's gonna be a little tricky. I do have that color on my plate still, luckily. I'm just gonna lightly brush over my thumbprint just to dull it. I still see it a little, but it's better. So yeah, when you're finished, Sign your names, take a picture, please. I like seeing your finished work. You can post them right on my Facebook page, Willy Nilly. There is a post pinned right to the top where you can find it easy. Just share them there. I love seeing them. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.